Hello and welcome to a Python 3 programming tutorial. Today I'll be going over the beginner stuff. At this point I'm going to assume that you have Python installed and you're comfortable enough to use the text editor of your choice. The text editor I'll be using is going to be Nano, which comes pre-installed with most Linux distributions. I'll add the TACW flag to disable word wrapping and then I can give it the name of our application. We'll call it app1.py. As you can see we got an empty text file and now we can start Python coding. So this is how most programming tutorials start is they teach you how to do a nice hello world program. In Python, this is one line of code, so I can run this program simply by typing Python 3 and the name of my file. And as we can see, it just outputs the words hello world and then it exits. So that is command output. One thing we can do is we can also use variables in Python. So I can create a variable. We'll call it message. And we can have it say, I love you. And now instead of saying hello world, we can put in our variable name message. Now when we run our program, it outputs I love you. So try and understand how this works. We put the value I love you and saved it to a variable called message. Then we passed in message as the variable that we're going to be outputting with our print statement and therefore it printed this value to the screen. Additionally, you can see that this top line right here is a comment, and this has no effect on the interpreter so long as it is text on the right side of this little pound symbol here. Additionally, I can move this over here, and this will still have no effect on the terms of how the program actually functions. It still has the exact same output. So anything on the right side of a pound sign is going to be ignored by the interpreter and will have no effect on the program's execution. This is useful for programming uh, for code documentation. So if you had to hand this to another programmer, they can read this and maybe better understand the code you're writing and how it works. We'll get rid of this for now. This line right here defines a variable called message and we put a value into our variable called message. Since it is in between two quotation marks, it will recognize it as a string. Here, this is just a print statement that will just print whatever output we put into it. So we can also get input from our user using the input function and we'll ask the user a question such as what is your favorite color? And now this is going to have a similar effect to our print statement right here in that whatever we put in here is going to become outputted to the screen. However, one thing that input will do differently is that it will uh, freeze the program and wait for the user to input a value. So I run my program again. Whoops, I'll save first. It says I love you, then it asks what is your favorite color? As you can see, it hasn't exited yet because it's waiting for me to input a value. So if I hit blue, as soon as I hit enter, 
this input function will return its value and therefore it will reach the end of my code and exit like it did right here. So we can also take this value that the user inputted to us and store that inside a variable. We'll call it fave color. A variable name can be whatever you feel is most fitting. There are some stipulations such as it can't have a space. Another one is it can't be a word that we've already or it can't be a reserved word in the Python language. So I can't have a variable called print because it will get confused with this statement right here. So we'll have another print function. This time we'll output the message your favorite color is and then we'll do the percent sign s. Over here off to the side we'll do a percent sign and we'll give it our fave color variable name. I save my program. Now when we run it, we'll ask for my favorite color. I type in blue. When I hit enter, the value I entered here is going to be stored in this variable here. So now blue is going to be equal, or favorite color is going to be equal to blue. Then it's going to print this message here, your favorite color is, and when it gets to this percent sign s, this is a placeholder, so it's going to get the value we specified here off to the side, which is fave color, and output it here. And this gives us the output, your favorite color is blue. So with Python, we can also use numbers in our variables. So we could do a equals one, b equals two, and now we can do print a plus b and when we run our program it will output the number 3 because a equals 1 b equals 2 therefore a plus b equals 3 and that's the value that this print statement will actually output to the screen so for the time being let's get rid of that code and we're going to ask the user another question. This time, we'll ask them, how old are you? And we'll store that value into a variable called age, because that seems fitting. And then we'll print, you are this many years old and we'll give it age. Now we execute our program, creates our variable message, I love you, we print that message to the screen, therefore that comes out. Then we have our input statement here, ask for my favorite color, it's going to wait for me to enter a value, I type in red red gets saved to this variable here and therefore it prints out our color red in this placeholder here so we get the output your favorite color is red now it asks how old I am so it's waiting for me to enter a value I'll say 4 I hit enter 4 gets saved into this value age and it prints out you are it reaches this placeholder here, so it grabs age, which is 4, and then years old, and that gives us our output, you are 4 years old. So we can also do math with our variables. So one thing we can do is, just as we can add variables together when we did a plus b, we can use the asterisk sign, which is multiplication, and what we'll do is age equals age times 7. So what this is going to do is it's going to evaluate the expression age times 7 and then it will save that that value and copy it over to age. So the new value of age after this line it executes 
is going to be seven times that what it was prior. And we'll have another print statement saying, oops, in dog years, you will be years old. age again. So now if we run our program, ask my favorite color, green, ask how old I am, I'll say eight. It says you are eight years old. In dog years, oh gosh, now that doesn't look right. So as we can see here, Instead of outputting 8 times 7, which would have been 56, it's outputting 8 7 times, the number 8, just 7 times. So the reason why it's doing that, instead of what we saw earlier with our A plus B, is because it's currently treating our input as a string. This input function will always return things as a string, so when we do math, right here, it's actually doing math with a string instead of a number. So instead of doing 8 times 7, it did a string that contains the number 8 7 times. And that's why it outputted 8 7 times instead of doing 8 times 7. To fix that, we can use a function called int int will convert a value from a string that's been given into it and convert it into an integer. So we simply do that and now when we run our program I'll ask my favorite color I'll say red, ask how old I am I'll say 6 and you can now see it recognizes it as a number so when we get to this line here, it does age times 7. Since I inputted the value 6, it gets converted into an integer. It says I am 42 years old, or I'm 6 years old. That says age times 7, so that's going to become 42. And now it outputs in dog years, you will be grabs our placeholder, which is age, which has just been converted from, s from 6 to 42. However, there is one problem with this program. If I run it again, it asks for my favorite color. I can say yellow. That's how old I am. I'll say 5. It says in dog years I'll be 35. But if I instead inputted the value 5, if I typed out, typed it out like that, it will complain with an error. And the reason being is this int function right here is trying to convert the word 5 into a number. It doesn't really know how to do that. So I could have just as easily did some forehead typing here on the keyboard and it will be confused because it doesn't know how to recognize this value as a number. Because it can't, it complains with an error. So one way we can fix that is we can use try and accept. So anytime you have try, you also need to have accept. And we'll say you did not give a number. So we save our program. Now when we run it, favorite color red, how old I am. If I enter in red again, it's going to say I did not give a number. Now it still complains with an error, but this is 
notice that this is a different type of error than what we had before. So whereas here it was the int function that wasn't able to convert a word into a number, this time it's trying to define age when it hasn't been defined. It's trying to do math with the variable age when age hasn't been defined. So how try and accept work is it will attempt to run this command here. If the command succeeds, then it will just skip that block and go down to this command here. If the command fails for any reason, such as this integer has a problem converting a word into uh, an, an integer, then instead of executing this command, it will skip it and execute this command instead. As we can see, that is what happened here. So it said you did not give a number. However, it skipped this part here because this command failed and age was therefore never defined. So when we tried to do age equals age times seven, we tried to multiply a number with an unknown value by seven. And because it didn't know how to multiply an unknown number by seven, it complained with this error here. So one way we can fix that is we can use a loop. We'll use an infinite loop. Now infinite loops will never will never stop running until uh, either the user breaks it out or clicks on the X or something like that or until it reaches a breakpoint in the code. So I'll put one right there. So the reason why while one is an infinite loop is because one is our expression it will evaluate and since one will always evaluate to a true value uh, one is always true, zero is always false. So since one is always going to be true it's going to execute this line of code. As soon as it reaches the end of this code, it's going to start executing this line of code again from the top. So it's going to repeat this code again and again until we reach a breakpoint, which this breakpoint is only going to be hit if this command executes successfully. So we run our application again. It asks for a favorite color. I'll say yellow ask how old I am. Now I can just swipe my keyboard. You can see that's not a valid entry. I hit enter. It says you did not give me a number. Because this command failed, it skipped this command, went straight to the exception, printed this value, then it reached this line of, it reached the end of this block of code, so it went back to our loop, checked to make sure that one is still true, which it always is, and now it's going to try again, asking me how old I am. And I can keep going all day, just smashing my keyboard, until eventually I give it a number. And then, I give it a number, this command works successfully, therefore it reaches this breakpoint, which causes it to break out of this loop, and it will go down to this line of code right here. And now, everything will work just fine. Now I know you may think that your user should be smart enough that if you ask them how old they are they should give you a number, but a smart programmer should always assume that he's dealing with idiots. Uh, I know that's probably not the best way to put it, but it, it kind of is. You should always assume that your users don't necessarily know how to use your program. You should always assume that they're going to be a jerk and maybe try and make your program crash. And ideally you don't want your program to crash. I would much rather have a user stuck in an infinite loop than I would have a user see an error message like this. So now we can get on to conditional statements. So we can simply have a command if, and we can say if age is equal to 77, then we'll say print you are the same age as my dog. 
Okay. So now, if I run our program, ask how old I am, I say five. It says in dog years, you'll be 35 years old. So nothing, this command wasn't outputted because age did not equal 77. If it did, it would have outputted this statement. So let's do this again. Oops. I say 11. Now it says you are the same age as my dog. So it checks to see if this expression is true. If it is, it executes this. If not, it skips this part. So one thing we can do is we can say else print you are not the same age as my dog. We save. Ask for a favorite color. Ask for an age. I give it six. And now what it does here is it tries to see if the value I have gave it is equal to, that's what these two equal signs mean, is equal to 77. Since it wasn't, this line of code was not executed, and therefore this line of code was called instead. A little more fun we can have with if statements is we can use an L if statement which will only be called if the original if statement above it fails. So this has to be used below an if statement. Uh, so does else too, by the way. So we can do age is less than or equal to 77, or we'll just put less than. And then we'll print the message. You are younger than my dog. And we can have another LF statement. LF age is greater than 77. Print, you are older than my dog. Capitalize these. So now I can give it a value really big. And it will say, you are older than my dog. If I give it a value really small, it says, you are younger than my dog. So try and understand how those if statements work. Uh, you're welcome to pause the video and just think it through. Now I'm going to go into something a little more complicated. We're going to be making a timer application. So the first thing we'll do is we'll go to the top of our code. We'll do import time. And what this is going to do is it's going to import a module called time that Python has pre-installed. And it will allow us to use time-based functions in our program. So what I'm going to do here is I'll have a print command notifying our user what's going on. And we'll just say, please wait one second for each dog year you have. And then we'll have another loop again. This time we'll do while age is greater than zero. And it will print age. Then it will do time.sleep one and age minus equals one. So this minus equals one is the exact same as doing age equals age minus one. So it's just kind of a shorthanded technique. So in fact, we can even go back up here and we can shorten it a little bit doing age times equals seven and that's not going to have any effect on the way how our program works. And then at the end of our loop, 
we'll have a print statement that just says, thank you for waiting. So now, when we execute our function, give it a color, blue, how old I am, I'll say three, and you can see it starts counting down from 21, because uh, that's how old I am in dog years. When it gets to zero, it will print this message here saying, thank you for waiting. So how this loop works is it will evaluate this expression I give it. We'll see if age is greater than zero. If it is, then it will run this line of code. If not, then it will skip this line of code and go straight to this line here, right here. So as you can see, each time this code runs, age becomes one smaller. So it starts at 21, then it goes down to 20, 19, 18, and once it gets below zero, we get to this, or below one, it gets to this expression right here. It checks to see if age is greater than zero. It is not. So it skips this line of code and just says, thank you for waiting. And the program is now done. All right. And uh, that's pretty much all there is to it. That's all I'm going to go into today. In future videos, I'll go into some more in-depth stuff. This try and accept stuff is usually considered pretty advanced and isn't really taught to beginners. Loops is usually kind of... It will take a little bit more time before most introductory courses will go over loops. So if you guys are understanding this stuff, as well as these conditional statements and how they work, and how this try and accept works, then you're doing pretty good for a, a beginner in Python.